This equation is very useful for buffer calculations. So if you're ever unsure and you're using, uh, let's say, um, a monoprotic um, acid, weak acid, maybe it was, for example, um, a dichloro or monochloroacetic acid, as long as you know the Ka, and as long as you know approximately what's being added in terms of the conjugate base, in this case our sodium acetate, and the amount of free acid you're adding, you can calculate approximately what the buffer pH will be. The biggest assumption is that the equilibrium concentrations are the same as the concentrations of the components which we mix to make the buffer. So in other words, they remain principally unchanged. In the previous example of a 1.00 molar, uh, solution of ethanoic acid and ethanoic uh, ethanoate, sodium ethanoate, are mixed to make the buffer. The assumption in this case is that the concentrations will be the same in dynamic equilibrium. To ensure that the effects of this assumption are minimized, the following should be observed. When the concentration of conjugate base is divided by the concentration of the weak acid, the resulting value should be between 0.10 and 10. Concentrations of the components should exceed Ka by at least 100 times. Buffers do not have a limitless ability to resist change in pH. Addition of sufficient acid or base will overcome the buffering capacity of a solution and a change in pH will be observed. This will happen before one of the, one of the buffer components is completely changed to the other. The more concentrated the buffer, the greater its capacity for buffering. And the more effective buffer will be one which has the identical concentrations of acid per conjugate base, such as in the case pH equals pKa. So therefore the other terms are 1 over 1. The buffer will be effective at one unit either side of this point. So for example, if we take the log um, of the conjugate base over the log of the weak acid, as long as the value falls within one unit, minus one or plus one, we know that it's going to be reasonably effective. The acetic acid or ethanoate buffer gave a pH of 4.74 with equal concentrations of acid and a conjugate base, so ethanoate buffers will be effective at their pH range of 3.74 to 5.74. As you can appreciate from what I said, a pH of 7.4 is typically considered to be acceptable physiological pH, for example, for blood plasma. And so often sodium acetic acid or sodium ethanoate and ethanoic acid buffers are not particularly useful in mimicking biological conditions. Now, buffer recipes can be found in books to ensure sufficient capacity given solutions of varying pH. Obviously, what I just showed you there uh, was to do with an acetic acid and sodium acetate buffer, which gives a relatively acidic pH buffer. Uh, and when you're looking at biological uh, and medical applications, it's also important to consider the potential toxicity of the ingredients. Is that one of the reasons for the use of Tris or HEPI's buffer? Um, and also, if you require it, some of the higher pH buffers like borate. Thank you very much. You just completed your first video of the world's best medical exam preparation. Lecturio brings the knowledge of worldwide leading medical experts and teaching award winners to your PC, tablet, or smartphone. Prepare yourself and check your progress with thousands of quiz questions customized to US MLE standards. And the very best, you can get in touch with our medical experts personally. Visit Lecturio.com now and continue with the most inspiring medical education around the globe, anytime, anywhere.